Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I ain't want nothing. Okay, yes, I did. 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 I wanted something. Okay, so I don't really, I was sitting here thinking, like, how am I going to start this video off without making it seem so heavy? <laughs> but I really don't know any other way to say it, because we're just going to talk about colorism on Real Housewives of Atomic. We're going to touch on it. Because I don't want to, you know, drain you with, girl, a 30, 40 minute video. So we're just going to touch on it. And then we may touch on, it, touch on it again in a couple of weeks. So this is a problem that I'm having, right? And the reason why I'm making this video is really because when things, let me just let you in on something about me. When I say things don't bother me or I'm going to let it go, if I continue to think about it and it stays on my mind, then it's clearly bothering me and I need to talk about it. <laughs> so I've been trying to let this go, but <laughs> I keep thinking about it. So I'm like, girl, the only way you're going to like let it go is if you get it out. So here we are. Um... I think that it is hard for black people, um, for whatever reason, to talk about colorism. Because I think that for some of us, when there is a situation that may occur, occur with someone who is of a darker skin tone, people just kind of sweep it under the rug as though, oh girl, what if it's, I just don't like the heifer. Right, like, what if it's just like I just don't like her? Okay, let me say this. If you don't like me and I just happen to be gay, that does not make you homophobic. If you dislike someone and they're black and you're not black, that doesn't make you racist, right? But if you dislike me because I'm gay, we're going to have to have a conversation. Well, we don't have to have nothing. Or if you dislike someone because of the color of their skin, then if it walk like a duck, if it looks like a duck, and it quack like a duck, then maybe it's a duck. If I see that how you interact with folks of a darker skin tone is completely different with how you interact with folks of a lighter skin tone, then there may need to be a conversation. <laughs> I'm just saying. Even when all that stuff was going on, you know, during Basketball Wives that season when OG, some people was like, you know, it's not what y'all are saying it is. It could just be that they don't like OG. That's a possibility. But I think that those who watched that season knew exactly what it was about. So when we watch Real Housewives of Potomac and people start having these conversations about how Candace, how Wendy, how they're handled versus how their castmates who just happen to be light skinned, yellow bone, red bones, okay? And it's been talked about and noticed, especially as it pertains to the viewers and how they treat Candace and Wendy versus the other castmates. And I guess an example I, I could use is Candace. We know that people say that she has one of the most disgusting mouths and that she goes below the belt with her rebuttals. 
and she doesn't know when to stop. And just the outrage that ensues on Twitter, in the comment section, especially in seasons past, right? And I will be kind of confused because I'm hearing folks say this stuff and I'm like, girl, you can't be for real because if you have this much outrage and disdain for Candace, then girl, you have to be absolutely floored with Ashley Darby and the things that have come out of her mouth. Because Ashley has said this, Ashley had, I mean, Ashley has attacked Katie's mental health. Ashley has attacked Ray's penis. Ashley has attacked Robin in her situation over there with Juan. Like, Ashley has went down the list and said some crazy things. And maybe because I wasn't really, like, in on Twitter back in the day, I didn't really know what was going on on Twitter. But, girl, I still don't remember that much going, being said even in the comment sections on Instagram. So I'm just like, where is this coming from? Because, girl, the way that y'all act is like Candace slept with your man, stole your last $20, and ran off with your newborn baby. Girl, with your man. Girl. Like, that's the way y'all be acting. And so I never could really just, like, put it together. And I'm like, why, why, why are they always on Candace? Because, like, Candace has not said the word. Girl, like... You, uh, we can literally go to Karen who admitted to lying. <laughs> Karen admitted to lying at the reunion last year. She said it. She said that when she said those things about Giselle at Wendy's home, she knew that it, was, it wasn't the truth. And she still said it anyways. She still said that girl Giselle had a hot box and she was a hoe from Hampton or whatever she was saying. But y'all went up for it and didn't nobody say Giselle should have reached across the table and slapped the dog fuck out of Karen or drag Karen. So I'm like, what is, well, like, what is the tea? What's the tea? What is the tea? Right? And then Wendy comes in and I see how people treat Wendy. And even say for Ashley. Ashley will call Wendy ferocious, right? But she didn't use the ferocious. I think she said she was aggressive. I can't remember the exact words, but I remember I do remember her saying ferocious. And I'm like, you didn't use those words to describe Robin when she got in your face at your goddamn job. Remember when Robin went to Ashley's job? To her job to her place of business, the business that she owned, and put her finger in her face. And I don't recall Ashley referring to Robin as ferocious. I don't recall the viewers referring to Robin as aggressive when she stepped up to Monique's face, when she stepped into um, Ashley's face. Now she stepped into, well, tried to get into Wendy's face. So I'm just saying there's clearly, <laughs> there's clearly something going on. And it's something that, especially black folks, don't want to talk about. It's like, whenever we watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, right? I, I even get uncomfortable coming down here and having conversations about colorism and racism because it's like, girl, sometimes people, we just want to watch these shows and have a good time and kiki and laugh. And girl, if the girls get dragged, the girls get dragged. If they get red, they get red. If they get shaded, they get shaded. And girl, we wait for next week's episode, right? That, that, that's, what we, that's what we want to do when we watch these shows. But I also feel like if we continue to live in this bubble of let's just watch the housewife shows 
and pretend that what they're doing is not actually happening, I think that we're doing a disservice to ourselves, honestly. And we're, it, it, it is not okay to not discuss something when it's right in your face. Like we want, we, there are white people out there who want us to watch The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Let me use that as an example. I, when Garcelle first got on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I didn't go for Garcelle. I thought Garcelle was cute. Like, oh, okay, she's cute. She has potential. I was going up for Erica Jane. And quiet as this kept, I was going up for Lisa Renna. And I was going up for Sutton. I was pretty much going up for the white girls before I even went up for Garcelle. But even with me going up for Lisa, me going up for Sutton, me going up for Erica Jane, me going up for Cal Lowkey, I still had to be honest in some of the things that I felt like I was seeing flash across my television screen. Even when Garcelle called out Cal for saying that she didn't pay her bills and how that, how that could look, you know, with her being a black woman and, you know, you saying that I don't pay my bills. And the people who have watched my videos know I got down here and said, I was like, well, I mean, girl, no tea, no shade, Garcelle. But girl, did you pay your pussy bill, girl? <laughs> like, girl, did you pay the bill? Like, I'm not one of those people that tries to turn everything into something that's, girl, homophobic or racist or colorist. Sometimes it is what it is, <laughs> right? But then I have to be honest, like when I'm watching the show and I see Lisa Renna, this example just popped into my head. When I see Lisa Renna, you know, they're all sitting around. This was the last episode of this past season. And Lisa Renna kind of popped her neck when she was talking to Garcelle. You know, they were having their little exchange and Garcelle said something like, I'm talking to you too or something. And then Lisa was like, why do you have to have an attitude when you, talk, when you talk to me, Garcelle? I can't remember her exact wording, but she said something along those lines. And I felt like when I saw Lisa talk, her neck popped a little bit. And I was like, see, that's what I be talking about. That's what black people be talking about. We talk about those microaggressions, right? You popping your neck. Because you don't pop your neck when you're talking to Karen, Sue, Becky, and girl Kathy. But you pop your neck when you're talking to the black woman. So then when we start to call out these things, white people and probably even some black people start to get uncomfortable because they feel as though, girl, why can't we just watch the show and the show just be the show? Because we're not going to watch this shit and not call out what the fuck we see. And what I see is what I see. Okay? So it's like we get into this, we get to this spot where white people don't want to have a conversation about racism or the things that they do, right? When Kathy says stuff like, oh, I don't see color. Hell, for you see color. You know I'm a big black man. Don't play, right? We can have this conversation, right? And we can both learn from it. But girl, you see color. That's just your way to get out of trying to say that you're racist. But girl, you see color. So here we are. We talk about colorism. Black people don't want to talk about colorism because they feel as though, girl, why can't, why can't it just be, I don't like the heifer? Sometimes it could be, you just don't like the heifer. But sometimes it might be, you might be low-key colorist and you might not even realize it. Because how would black people feel if you watch my channel I'll just use me as an example. If you watch my channel and I got on here and I tried to pretend that I wasn't seeing the microaggressions that happened on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, y'all be rolling your eyes at me like, no, this motherfucker didn't just get his black ass down to the goddamn YouTube acting like he ain't seen this shit. <laughs> right? I feel like I, it's, like, it's kind of like my duty to call out the stuff. We ain't got to call out everything. We ain't got to call out old girl. Son took her trash, took her, kicked her girl. Son told her black cat to get off her goddamn couch. 
You know what I'm saying? Some shit is just like, it, it, it's not to be, it, we don't have to go pick apart everything. But some stuff needs to be said, you know? So then we get to Real Housewives of Potomac, and then the people start calling out the stuff that we see. And now it's like, it's like, you know, it's a group of y'all, no tea, no shame. It's a group of y'all who start to get uneasy and uncomfortable and just want to make it seem as though I just don't like Candace because I don't like Candace. I don't like Wendy because I just don't like Wendy. It's deeper than that. And not all of y'all. Some of y'all truly just don't like Candace because you don't like her personality. That's completely fine. Some of you don't like Wendy because you just don't like her personality. That is completely fine. But the problem that I have is when you hold Candace and Wendy to a certain standard and these girls over here do the exact same thing or worse -er, and I don't hear that outrage for this group that I hear for this group. That, my dear, is when we start to have a conversation and, girl, the eyebrows start to raise and I start to... Mm, mm. Like last year, when they were, when they were filming, we're going to talk about this next week, and they got out that somebody had threw some wine and everybody said that Candace threw wine on Mia. That was the rumor. And everybody was online hoping that Monique came back and drugged Candace and that's why she got her ass beat the first time and blah, 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 blah. And Candace's black ass wasn't even in goddamn Miami. Come to find out it was Wendy throwing wine on Mia. I mean, Mia throwing wine on Wendy. And bitch, when I tell you, everybody just, bitch, I thought Twitter went out for the day. So that's what we mean when we say that some of you have colorist ways and some of you need to really take a look in the mirror because your outrage for one happens to be different for this one. You try to sweep under the rug what this one does, but girl, we want to pin this one to the cross. My whole thing is if you're going to pin this one to the cross, we pin in all them bitches to the cross. Because, baby, I've been here since season one. I know what these heifers have said. I know what's popped out of their goddamn mouths. Now, I wasn't here for season two. I tapped out season two because mm, they, was doing, they, was, they was fake and phony. But I tapped back in season three. I clocked back in season three. But I know what's going to came out of these heifers' mouths. Y'all just clocked in, girl, season five, the fight episode. And y'all think y'all, girl, Real Housewives of Potomac is stories. <laughs> Girl. I'm just saying because I get that the conversation is uncomfortable I get that we just want to watch this show and just watch the girls tongue tussle and read and shade but where the problem starts to kick in is when the viewers and even some of the castmates they start to move and operate in the way where the treatment towards the darker skinned castmates is not the same as those of the lighter skinned castmates. And then when people say, bitch, y'all hoes low key colorists, then people start this whole, oh my God, why do we have to go down this lane? Why can't it just be this and that? Because it's not just this and that. It's colorism. And I don't want to get ahead of myself because we're going to wait to, to next week's episode. But there is no reason for Mia to be that upset at Wendy, especially when the two heifers who literally called you pretty much a lie to your face, you then gave a hug and you <laughs> moved on with Robin and Giselle. And then y'all wonder why the girls be calling y'all colorist. Because what has transpired from this See, episode one to episode six next week. It's episode six next week. Well, girl, you should have been throwing, where well, you was throwing wine and trying to bop somebody with your purse. Now, I can wrap my head around you bopping somebody in the, with your purse after they called you a liar about saying about you having cancer. I can see that. <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to wait till next week. Um, that's all I just wanted to say for right now. I want to get that off of my chest. Um, I just think that 
we have to start being honest, even if it's uncomfortable. We have to start being honest, y'all, and we can't just sweep stuff under the rug as though, oh, I just don't like the heifer because I don't like the heifer. Nah, sometimes it's deeper than that. Sometimes it's deeper than that, right? Like, I could sit here and say that, like, I feel like it's just deeper than that. Because, like I said, the outrage that some of you have when Mia, when, when Candace and Winnie, when they do stuff, is not the same when these group of women, Ashley, Karen, Giselle, Robin, they can do the exact same, same thing or even worse. Girl, Candace, all she got to say is, yo mama. And y'all want her to be fired. <laughs> Girl, for saying, yo mama. Ray can sit here and talk about Ray's shriveled up penis. She can attack Katie's mental health. Girl, the list goes on and she could try to cover up S.A. that her husband committed. Girl, the list goes on and on and on. I have yet for y'all to hear uh, start a petition for Ashley to be fired. So I guess the question is, can we watch Real Housewives of Potomac and not have to talk about colorism? And I would say that the answer is yes, if it doesn't happen. <laughs> if I don't see colorism on the show, or if I feel as though it's not, you know, if it's, if it's not happening, then there's nothing for me to discuss that involves colorism. I try to be as fair as possible. For the, for the girls who don't know, I Ashley was actually my favorite for a very long time. <laughs> I went up for Ashley probably seasons one, seasons three. <coughs> I think seasons four. Seasons five, I was like, ooh, Ashley, you moved dirty. I just think that if it happens, it will be discussed. I try to be fair in my reviews. Last year, for example, when Candace tried to pull the, oh, she threw a whole bowl of lettuce at me. Girl, it don't matter if she dumped the whole bowl of lettuce on your head. You threw lettuce at her first. I'm talking about Mia. You threw lettuce at her first. You threw a piece and she chose to throw a whole handful with the big old hands of hers. Girl. Right? So I try to be fair. And I try to be honest as possible, right? As honest as possible. Without, girl, get my channel taken down. Honey, because the, the way they counseling people left and right, baby. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, girl, we try to be as, as honest as possible. But I feel like it's my, it's, it's my job to call it out. Like, I could not watch this show, y'all. I'm sorry. Like, I could not watch, I could not watch this show or these shows from Real, House, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills on down to Real Housewives of Potomac and I see stuff that's going on and my spirit is moved and I not call it out. Because at that point, I'm not being honest with myself. And before I can be honest with anybody, I'm damn sure going to be honest with Rodney. Okay? Girl, I see what I'm seeing. And I'm noticing what I'm noticing. And I'm seeing how even some of the girls are moving on this show. I damn sure see how the viewers are moving. But I'm seeing how they move on this show. Some stuff is, yes, a bitch just don't like a bitch, okay? Sometimes you just don't like a bitch. It ain't got nothing to do with her skin color, where she grew up from. I just don't like that hoe, <laughs> okay? And sometimes it is it's, it's exactly that. But sometimes it's not. And the times that it's not, we're going to talk about it. And that's just what it comes down to. We can get on here. 
We can talk about these trifling ass niggas and them being about them being ain't shit niggas. But we're gonna talk about the women. We're gonna talk about the women too. We're gonna talk about that the way that they move. We're gonna talk about Marceau. We're gonna talk about Maurice. We're gonna talk about Tisha, Martel, Melody, Kimmy, and then we're gonna talk about Giselle. We're going to talk about Ashley, Mia, Candace. We're talking about all of them. And when I see something that ain't right, we're going to talk about it. Now, I'm trying not to make my review. That's why I wanted to make this video. That's another reason why I wanted to make this, make this video separate. Because I'm trying not to make my review so, like, you know, I just want to come down here and kiki and laugh, too, right? I do want to kiki and laugh. But I'm going to tap on the stuff. But I really wanted to make a separate video because y'all know I can get with my mouth. I'm real long winded, no telling how long this video is going to be. But even in my reviews, we're going to tap on it. Now, I'm not going to go into no long rant, right? On a long State of the Union speech. But we're going to tap on the stuff that we see in these episodes. We're going to have fun in the reviews. But when some shit needs to be discussed, it will be discussed. All I'm saying is this. If this was one of those white women up there in Beverly Hills who had done one thing to Garcelle, we would be beating the streets, calling it racism. No questions asked. So I'm not exactly sure with the evidence that we have in the footages. Shout out to the footages with the footage that we have. When it comes to Real Housewives of Potomac, why people are so hesitant to call it for what it is. The girls are participating in colorism. That's what it is. They need to know that's what's going on and they need to change their ways. And if they don't change their ways, then I'm just going to go ahead and label them and stamp them with the C word. Hell, for you a colorist. I think that's only fair. I think that's only fair. I think that we should give, in some instances, <laughs> we should give people a chance to change and to evolve, right? And to realize how they may be moving. The era of their ways. Girl, you, you know you kind of move shady when you... I want to change your ways. Yeah. Right? I don't know why it's so hard for black people to have conversations about colorism. You know, I, I don't even know why it's so hard for black people to admit that black people can be colorist. Knowing damn well that we can be. Like, I don't We know the viewers are. No tea, no shade. I know some of the viewers are. And I think that a couple of the castmates, cast members are too. Do I just want to set it in stone? No. I'm trying to be nice, I guess. But from what I can see, you're definitely moving in the way of a colorist. We're going to head and call a thing a thing, girl. Ashley, you got some work to do. Mia, you got some work to do. Karen, you got some work to do. Because I remember they come, that comment they say you supposedly made that Wendy didn't fit right with the aesthetic of the group. Girl, I'm just going to call a thing a thing. Girl, y'all got some work to do. Giselle, you got some work to do. Girl, Robin, you got some work to do. But at the top of that list is probably Ashley Darby, Karen Huger. Yes, Karen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they got some work to do. They have some work to do. Sorry, y'all. All right, I'm gone for real. Bye, y'all.